Uh, can I have a motion Monica to Patrick. open up our meeting, please? So moved. Second, anybody? Second. We have one excused absence today, Rita Harris, who will be with us today. Uh, as we start off, um, if everybody could look at their uh, minutes from the November 10th meeting. November. Long time ago. Uh, November. November 10th. Has it been that long? <laughs> And uh, if anybody have any comments or anything they'd like to add? And if not, can I have a motion to accept the meeting minutes of November 10th, 2021? center if they want them yep so I mean they're, they're free to any senior um, whether they come to the senior center or not and um, like I said we have we have a lot so uh, they can contact us we have quite a, people, quite a few people who have it it went out in our newsletter too mm -hmm. so yeah. you can also get those online too from the federal government this doing yes that's they're right. doing another yeah. round actually so yeah, yeah. yeah. The second round yeah. Yeah. so and it's a nice way too for um, people to be able to get together with their families, you know, so. So we had closed on uh, January 6th, so we just reopened on February 22nd. So in that time, we did buy some office supplies. We did do all new tablecloths. Our tablecloths were about eight or nine years old. They were really shredded on the edges. Uh, we used the gift accounts for that. Um, I just paid Bloomberg and Yoga, and uh, we had a phone bill. So, and I just paid um, the My Senior Center contract, which does the maintenance every year, does all the updates, gives us the support we need for our scanning system, and um, you know takes care of any other fixes that we need done. So I just paid that yesterday, and that one. Great. Stay clean. So because we have closed intermittently, um, some we never had Tai Chi come back because she moved out to like Minnesota or somewhere. We, had, we have extra money in the state grant this year, so we are going to do a computer lab. So we're going to buy laptops, and um, we're going to put them over here. We're going to get some kind of a desk. And um, that way the seniors have access to that. The laptops are great because they can be updated constantly by our IT department. And um, it gives the seniors the opportunity to be able to come in. Hopefully, we will have some of the National Honor students be able to come in, or anybody who needs volunteer hours over the summer, and we can have a computer lab. If not, Justin's always been really great at the library. Jen and I are pretty, well, I'll say Jen is. Uh, tech savvy on yeah, I just get by. <laughs> I don't do anything fancy, but I do know how to open email and yeah. copy paste and make some spreadsheet. Um, so we thought that that would be a really nice opportunity to be able to do that this year. And the Wi-Fi is being going in. Correct. Yeah. 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 Can you hear my friend? So, 
We have the earmark state grant. It's like Brewster's Millions. I can never spend government money as fast as I can spend my own. So uh, we have $25,000 that I have to spend by the end of June. And we were going to do the electronic bathroom doors, and we were going to put shelving in the conference room for extra storage so we can get out of pan, Pan's painting closet. So I have called I don't know how many contractors. I now have two estimates. If they can get the supplies, um, I have to have three because the job for the cabinet is over $10,000. The doors were going to be about $6,200 from the door company to be able to come in and do what they needed to do, but we have to have electricians, so now that isn't going to be $6,200 anymore. That's going to be probably eleven dollars or $12,000 because you have to add the electrician in with them even though they're subcontract. So I think I've called five or six electricians. Half of the ones that work in town have been trying to retire for two years, <laughs> so they don't want the job. It's a pretty big job because our fuse box is located here and our bathrooms are way on the other side of the world and they have to go through the ceiling with all the wire and all the other stuff. So it's about maybe $5,200 to $5,300. I've only gotten, I've only received one estimate out of all of the electricians who have come out. So, um, you know, I did write a uh, job description up to the town administrator. I sent it to him. He was going to send it out, I don't know if it would be statewide. Um, it is a, you know, pay a bailing wage job, so it's a little bit more costly. And if I don't lose money by June, uh, June 30th, then I'm going to lose it. If so. you're under contract, is that, is that okay if you're under contract? You've got to spend the whole fund making the The job, yeah, I have to spend it by then. I mean, if we're under contract, maybe I could squeak that by, but it's going to have to have a, you know, an end date at some point. And um, so I don't want to lose this money. There isn't anything else frivolous I want to spend it on either. I mean, it was, it was earmarked for this purpose for those doors because we put in the ADA grant for like five years in a row and didn't receive it. And it's really a necessity then. The doors are tremendously heavy. You know, for anybody who's opening them, never mind somebody who's got a walker or a wheelchair or so. It's, it's very hard. Yep. So um, we have money. I'm just trying to spend it. And like I said, we can't. You can't get anybody to work. I don't know what's going to happen. All that, all this generation is going to <clears throat> college and IT, and there is no <laughs> no tradesmen. There left. is no tradesmen anymore. Yeah, so, um, you know, I know it's all over. The town is having issues. I know. I've talked to our building. It's, it's everywhere. And business, everybody. Yeah. Homeowners. Yeah. So, supply and demand. If we can even get the contractor, if we can even get the supplies that we need, that's it. Could change the price of things too. You know, the estimates that I got were two months ago from the contractors. You know. I'll give you a name of one of mine. Yeah, I would love one. And an electrician, if anybody yeah. knows one. I mean, I tried to keep it local, right? But um, I don't know. So that's our big conundrum now. Does they have their carpentry did they still do projects? I don't know. And I would have to say that it's a little bit different than just having like the place painted. You know what I mean? I'm not sure how that would work as far as prevailing wage. You they, got a they, permit. Right. Under right. So I'm not really sure because they have to be paid. Whereas oh. when they do, when they come out, it's like their um, internship. When they came to the senior center with their teacher, that was just practice. So I don't, it's a good idea. I don't really know that I could look into it. Yeah. yeah. It's worth checking in. Yeah. They yeah. have an apprenticeship program. Right. And in the electrical as well. I, I had somebody from APAP come out, and young kid, but he knew what he was doing, and I didn't. And he ran the wire from the telephone pole to the house, wired the meter, everything, and, right. and you're going to have it inspected. And, right. uh, the stuff is out there. Yeah. 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 Who, who's the one on your street? Down at the end? Electrician? Yeah. Bridge Bridge I don't know. Yeah. I know yeah. I've got, got, got a plumber at the end of my street. Please <laughs> <laughs> get somebody. So. You know, the only problem with that is, of course, in the school year. Correct. So, all coming events? So we have um, our hearing clinic um, this 
Thursday. We have um, Darcy coming in. She is going to check hearing aids, uh, clean them, go over them with people. She is going to be slated probably to come in sometime in May or June to actually give a presentation about uh, hearing loss in elderly and people and seniors and um, other helpful things to keep your hearing aids working properly. So, but she's starting out with just coming in and introducing herself and doing that. We are having our St. Patrick's Day um, party on March 17th. And uh, Jen and I will do the cooking. We're going to eat one big cabbage, all of that. We're going to play some Irish music in the background. And then the Sunshine Club is going to do uh, like raffles or 50-50 and maybe some, some trivia. We figured we'd keep it kind of simple. Our first thing, you know, to do. And instead of hiring, you know, somebody to come in, we just keep Simple. On um, March 23rd, we're going to get back to movies and lunch. Um, we're going to watch World with Grandpa. It's a good one. And um, oh, we're going to have a recycling program at the end of March. Dick Skinner is going to come in. He's the one that's doing our battery recycling. He's going to come in and show everybody how to recycle and where it goes. So he's going to play a fun game with it. Plastic goes here, glass goes here, what happens to it when it leaves. So, um, He's been really great about uh, the battery recycling. Even when we were closed, people were still going to drop off their batteries. Because it's nice to have a place to put them. It's, you know, you're not supposed to put them in the trash. So um, he's been uh, filling up over there quite well. So. So the exercise classes were moved up to the town hall in November. Um, just to have more spacing in the gym, because it was high, high, high impact, but yoga people could really stretch out. Um, we are going to move yoga back here at the last uh, 331. Yoga will come back here, and then hoping in April or May, if all the numbers stay the way they are, then we'll move the Zumba back here too. Yep, so it's nice to have the opportunity to have a space um, to be able to use, whereas we're kind of you know, small down here. And, you know, massive was not an option of doing that kind of exercise. So we're hoping to get everybody back to back to the center uh, by the end of uh, April. The Pam, the Sunshine Club, how's that going? Are you got an international trip coming up in the fall? Is that it? Yes. I hear things. People yes. talk. Yes, yes. I heard uh, that too. <laughs> yeah, we are um, rescheduling our course project at our capital in 2020 because of COVID for October. So uh, we're having a presentation here on 24th at 3 o'clock with the Colette Rep and the over in great detail and all the uh, information you need about the itinerary and getting to and from the airport. So that's the 24th here, so pass the word. Um, we are going to have a program here next Wednesday, the 16th. Jen's mother, who is an Olympic torch bearer in the 2002 Winter Olympics, with her still here in Fall River. She's coming in to do a presentation. And we're going to have a lot of questions for that. We did have that scheduled for the week of the Olympics. However, we weren't open, so <laughs> it's going to be post Olympic presentation. Then in April, we have a couple things planned. On the 20th, we're going to have our first nighttime event. It's going to be uh, him and bean supper, and we've got a, uh, a two timers coming in. They're a small, multi instrument thing. And uh, they'll be coming out to entertain us. Then on the 29th of April, uh, in the afternoon, with a mac and cheese lunch, ukulele players from the um, area are coming in to play to our state the year before. They come in for free, they just want to pay. So <laughs> we all work for so, food. That works, that works all around. No problem, that. So uh, that's what we've got in the works. Over here, Patrice set up a let us have that board to set up all kinds of day trips that are being offered in the area. A lot of them are through Foxy Travel. Northridge is working with um, another organization to uh, sponsor some day trips, mostly musical concert type things. So those are posted up there as well. That goes through the whole spring, summer, and fall up there. And the little sign-up sheet so that if anybody's interested, they can put their name there and we can call it in. So it's not something we're, we're not planning the transportation program, we're just enabling you to see what's available out there so you can sign up to go. 
at our meeting, we did have some uh, talks about uh, providing ideas for more uh, senior-related activities, like going to the Bruce Slater uh, Museum over in Webster. We're going to go check it out, see if it's user-friendly for seniors, and then uh, if it is, we'll try to set up a day where we can get a carpool to go over there. It's about an hour or an hour and a half program. We were in there when they were in the process of doing it, because the guy who did the mural was very instrumental in a lot of the work there at the uh, design and, and you know, so we got a little tour during the construction of it. They're very interactive. Kind of thing. So, uh, we'd like to come up with some ideas that perhaps the uh, senior center can, can run with and maybe work with to get more people interested in coming in. Dick Skinner, one of our members, came up with uh, the American Heritage Museum of oh, Hudson. Beautiful. The Collins yes. Foundation. You should go to that. I highly yeah. recommend it. Yeah. But he'll come and talk. So then if we get to come in and talk, then maybe through a uh, senior center we find a van and take it with us. But it's something that might generate more interest to get people in the because it's really, that's not, you know, crocheting. I think it's more in the sense of it's not sure. So we'd like to come up with some ideas of, around those lines at um, the senior center. We can pass some ideas on to Patrice and Jen. And miles of cans, dry work. Still doing that. Still doing that. It all winter. Jim goes and picks up three loads away that was the milfer for us, so we've been able to raise some serious funds for that. That's still ongoing. And so the third group is entering back in as of the end of the month. But these two groups are going to come back in now. There's a lot of Two groups will all winter. We and the horse. Uh, And didn't Dick uh, bring about, uh, up one of the topics on the walls? The, the, st the stone walls, stone yeah. Walls. Uh, getting a hold of that man to find a day when he's available is like pulling teeth. He's very busy. He's a professor. Yeah. So we don't have much time. Mm -hmm. We have reached out to him and we have to wait for him to get back. Yes, the art of stone wall. Yeah. You picked the right town. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> Any other business you would like to bring up today? I do. So I didn't have, um, I couldn't put it on the agenda because I wasn't sure of what my meeting was going to be, but I did meet with uh, finance for the last week. Our budget is pretty well funded except for percent that's gone up for the phone bill or utilities or other things. Um, we had it in our budget last year to replace Sandy with a part-time person. Um, when Jennifer went full-time, because of course we expanded our hours <clears throat> when we reopened. And um, so, because we were so unsure when we did open, how long we would be open or how busy we were going to be when we did open, I didn't bother to hire anybody for the position. I just wanted to see how it works. Um, so I did request that I could keep that and carry it over to my um, FY 2023 because indeed we've gotten really busy even this week. It's been insane. Our phones were ringing off the hook. We, our newsletter went out. The fire department is doing all kinds of spectacular things that um, the chief might want to touch upon. And so we are probably going to need somebody, especially once we get all of our bigger events going. There's a lot of setup, take down, and a lot of interactions. So, I'm hoping that they approve that and that they allow me to keep that budget and we are able to hire somebody part time to replace, um, you know, Sandy, because there's still a lot of things. Even though we have the My Senior Center, there's still a lot of stats to keep and reports to write and other things. So we're hoping um, with that, but we won't go until Tom we know. So, Chief, do you want to speak on the fire department side? Well, obviously, we want to try to get back and, and come in and do some presentations uh, at some point on. 
fire safety and being the senior population is a vulnerable, they're actually more vulnerable than the children are now, uh, if you go by the fire statistics. So we want to get back in and make people aware of that and um, talk about ways that we can keep you folks safe. I'm one of them. <laughs> so, um, uh, and then the other thing is, we, Joe had, uh, Lieutenant Overly came up with a, a couple of different programs through the SAFE program. One was uh, installing a sign so that your number is uh, visible from your house. That way you need an ambulance or something like that. We have no problem finding you. And it is a town bylaw or a state law, too. So um, these are things that we'll, we're offering for free through the SAFE program. And then the other thing is a, a little, uh, it's a little key box or a notch box uh, that has a a pad, so it's mounted to your house by your door, and then it's locked inside. It, it would be one of your keys. So if you're down, you fall, we can get access because we know that you're on that list. We'll be having that list. Um, you have to reach out to the Lieutenant Overly on the specifics of that, um, but it's something I, I feel that is uh, very important. There's been more times, can't count on how many times we've got somewhere and had to break a window or uh, break our way in but if you have a little key box that nobody else can get into it's sort of similar to what we have on the fire engines uh, and all the town building and buildings and businesses have to have a notch box and we have a universal key that only the fire department has so that we can get in and get the keys and get in anywhere um, and and so this would be your key in in the box uh, mounted to the house so that we can get in in the event of an emergency. I just think that those are two things that are very important. And so I highly recommend that you reach out uh, to Lieutenant Overy on that so we can get you squared away with that. Yep. We have, um, we were inundated with phone calls on Monday. I think we, I've been sending him emails daily and not just one or two, lists of people. I, I myself have had to climb through a window to try to get to somebody and it is. It's a lot easier if there is a key outside. Because I hid, now you're leaving. I did went outside my house. Yeah, you're leaving to go to the I'm hospital and before. your door is broken and can't even lock. So <clears throat> And the other thing is if, if you're away on vacation or something, you can it's there and then you just have to give whoever you want to watch your place, uh, you know, the number so they can oh, get yeah. into it. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is also Keep in mind uh, the battery situation that Joe has. We can get, change it. We can go in and change your batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, in your smoke detectors and also smoke detectors we have available for, for people who can't afford it. So. I mean, they do expire. He, they he do came expire, down yes. and, and spoke to us, and many people didn't realize, even myself. I'm like, 10 years, they expire. Where is the date? Where is this? And um, they've been very instrumental in going around town to a lot of our seniors because. When we've gone out to seniors' houses, you realize they have their battery out because it was driving them crazy, or, you know, it's very important to have your smoke detectors and your carbon monoxide detectors working. So they've done a great job going out and about. Yeah. Plus, not climbing up on a chair or a ladder to do it and fall and break your hip. So it's and a tremendously good service. That with the fire statistics, it's usually the fatal fires of people who had no work in smoke detectors. Right. Yeah. And so we want to prevent that as, as best mm -hmm. we can. So it's all really good programs, and uh, we're excited. Yeah, I have a question about the fire extinguishers. Yep. I'm on the second floor, and I always panic about, okay, if I have a fire, how do you get um, out of the So um, do those expire? Yes. They um, do. It, it depends on what you have, but uh, if you get something from Walmart, it's going to expire. And the other thing is, if you have a fire that's more than 20 or 30 second years, seconds years old in a, in a waste basket, just get out. Don't try to fight the fire on your own. Just get out and call us. The, the quicker you get out, uh, the more likely it's going to be a good outcome. And the fire extinguishers have to be rotated. Yeah. All so. of my biggest concern always is that I'm on the second floor. I had a fire in my kitchen for whatever reason in the middle of the night. I would be trapped in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. So I do keep one of my extinguishers in my bedroom. Um, and then I have the, I have a couple others in the other end of the house. But it's scary to think about, um, you know, so. And at my house, there are so many entrance doors to this house. Mm -hmm. It is so confusing. Right. And unless 
the, the first responders know exactly what my apartment is, you know, they don't know what to order go in. There's just so many entrances. So well, all I, I can did. recommend is, if, like, for instance, if you call and you say I have a fire and you think you might be trapped, you tell them yes. exactly what apartment number you're, you're trapped in. And, and we're throwing ladders to second floor windows and stuff to make okay. sure that we can get you out. So okay. it's just Do you have the stickers for the windows? I know when my kids were little. We used to have the top finders, but unfortunately, uh, there were those who uh, targeted children. Um, and oh. no, no, knew where to find them, and so we stopped doing that. Okay. okay. Unfortunately, we don't do the top finders, and if we do. They're inside and they're low because the smoke banks down and you can't see. So if we're crawling, they would be low, like outside of a bedroom or something. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't remove those when their kids get older. Right. So yeah. it can be dangerous to the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And who do I have to speak to about that? Lieutenant Overly. Okay. Yeah, and we're doing a sign up sheet here. So we sign everybody up here and we email them over and then yeah. he'll contact right. you and send up a yeah. Yeah. I definitely he's got his work cut out for him. He's got a lot of things going on. Yeah, he, does. <laughs> he, has, he has a really, really big list. <laughs> I think he needs a helper. Right? Yeah. Okay. Any other business? Anybody Patrice, else? I have info and a question. I volunteer at Food Pantry in Douglas, and we have been getting some wonderful donations of meat products from Hannaford. And we have a girl that we're working with that works at the Faith Fellowship Food Pantry, and we kind of share. You would not believe how much meat they donate. What they do is they take the meat off the shelf before the expiration date. They freeze everything. And so once a week, there's this person from Faith Fellowship. She goes and picks up the order shares what she can with us and takes the rest for her. We have a couple of brand new volunteers down there. And one of the ladies, she said, because when, when the stuff gets like freezer burn, who tells it? So um, we have one of the volunteers who does a deal with a pig farm, like all the produce that has to get thrown out and you would not believe how much um, goes to the pigs. Well, this new volunteer suggested, and she wanted me to talk to you about it, um, she would be willing to take some of that meat and make meals for shut-ins. And she said, I don't even know if that's allowed uh, because of the Board of Health issues and all of that. But she, she was so <coughs> upset with throwing all this meat out, and it's perfectly good meat. And she said, I would be, you know, Patrice knows anybody. It would have to be prepared in a serve safe inspected kitchen uh -huh. yep. with people who are serve safe and allergy yep. Um, yep. trained. I mean, you have the church. The I mean, she could, she definitely would prepare it in the church kitchen right. rather than her own home. Yep. And, um, you know, we get a lot of stuff from Panera, a lot of stuff. And that also goes to the pig farm. And it's such a waste. It's so sad. I packed up six boxes of produce the other day that had rotted. For some so, reason, we're not getting a lot of people. Could you, if you know that your food pantry is open on what days? We're open on Mondays from 4 to 6, Yep. Wednesdays from 1 to 3. Okay, so when you're finished with the food pantry for the week, on like a Thursday, if you wanted to bring anything over here, we could bag it up and it could be given to the seniors that committed out instead of being oh, thrown away. Yeah, that would be yeah, great. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. I mean, the, the meat, man, but produce or Panera, that kind of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. you know, like the, the canned soups yeah. and stuff like that, like one of the guys who's volunteering, um, he's been rearranging shelves for us and pulling all the stuff to the front 
that's going to expire snow enough. Right. So the shelves are getting stocked properly now. Yep. And um, they pulled off about three or four boxes of stuff that was in the realm of expiration. But it's pasta and rice and stuff like that, canned soup, that's still good. So what we decided to do, we asked Nancy Norberg if it was okay, we packed up these boxes and we're going to allow the people to take the stuff with the knowledge that they're going out of cold and rather than just cost it. So, I mean, even that stuff, some of it could come here. Yep. You know? Yep. And I mean, if you needed help, Jenna or I could always pop over there or yeah. maybe um, one yeah. of the other seniors that's out in the boat. Yeah, yeah. if you need to transport stuff yeah. up here, yeah. Jenna, I, you know, I'm I mean, next the, door. The, just we did that even with the garden. If we had uh, leftover stuff or, or anything else, we go people bring in stuff in their garden, yeah. just bag it up and leave it on the table yes. and people take it. So. Yeah. It would, it would be a way to rotate it through, and right now with the food prices going up, I'm sure that any oh, yeah. senior that can get their hand on even yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's, That's a good idea. Own. I do my own cooking. So. Yeah. And Pam, we also have a lady who brings us eggs. Her daughter has chickens, and you know, once a week she'll bring us so many dozens of eggs. But when she was there on Monday, she, they also have pigs that they send to slaughter. And she said, they just had a couple done, and she said, would the people be able to use the pork? So I'm thinking about you doing Pam's supper, and when Sharon comes back, I will talk to her about that. I mean, it's fresh, it's been packed by professionals where they have the pigs slaughtered, and, um, you know, she said, my husband and I will never use that at all. So I will talk to her and, right. you know, if you can give us how much you're going to need or whatever, she may be able to, she may be able to provide okay. that. Um, I'll look back at the records and see just what we've used up okay. in the past. That'll give me an idea of what to expect to probably um, this time. Okay, good. I will let you know that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So many of the programs that we'd like to see reinstituted that I was hoping to bring up today. Uh, you always accompany them with snacks or a meal or a lunch. Yes. And I don't see why you couldn't use those materials into making some of the meals you provide yeah. with people. The meals draw a crowd yeah, here. Especially and now. we've got some good ideas, and we're hoping Patrice is going to come up with some more ideas to do things on a regular basis mm -hmm. here. We've got a lot of afternoons. It looks like all the afternoons are available mm -hmm. to have a speaker, to have... Uh, there are so many topics we haven't touched on mm -hmm. down here that would be of interest. And uh, we're looking at things to go away to, like we mm -hmm. talked about the Slater Museum yeah. or the Tower Botanical. Mm -hmm. or that includes tra would include transportation, which if you could give us some ideas as to who could handle a group of 10 to 15 seniors and what the costs might be. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have the buses that the other towns around us have, so we have to look into that. Doing things here, if we could get some things done, I think on a more regular basis, you talked about the computers, if you're going to have some laptops. If you can have somebody coming in on a regular basis, even if it's only once a month, but one afternoon a month, if you're going to have somebody from the high school or an adult who used to have Mr. Belleville yeah, come in and give a class on something specifically and don't let him wind up being a repair man or a maintenance guy. Uh, but if we could 
seen that one day a week uh, or one day a month even, you're going to have somebody here. And the seniors have other needs besides uh, physical health. We've got emotional and mental mm -hmm. health as yeah. well yeah, that needs to be taken care of. Excuse me if I might be off on some of these things because I'm not familiar with things like pedicures or manicures, <laughs> but haircuts. Mm -hmm. And uh, if someone was here one day a month, uh, we won't know if they would be used unless you try it. And we're going to have some failures, but we'll hopefully we'll have successes. So maybe if you could explore some of those things and get back to us. And if anybody comes down and offers their services to you, could you, before accepting or rejecting, could you bounce it off of us in a meeting? Because we might have some input or some ideas that might help go over a stumbling block, preventing it from happening, or uh, we might do the opposite too, discourage it for certain reasons that you might not see. In this way, we would be more in touch with what's going on in your day as far as services being offered. And uh, I just like to see more being done in the afternoons here. So we've just, I mean, we've just opened up, right? So now that we're getting more people coming in, we do plan on expanding. I have a lot of things planned for May, a lot of things planned for June, a lot of things planned for uh, July. Different speakers, different things, a lot of different lunches. We're going to try to bring back the book club. So we do have a lot of things that were successful previous, but I'm always open to anybody who wants to come in and speak or anybody who has any ideas of what you'd like to see. We do have a hairdress that goes to people's homes. Um, you know, we do have the podiatrist, we do have the blood pressure clinic. Um, we were doing the hand massage, so we're hoping to bring that back. So. But I'm open to Remember that to anything that could help us at all. Yeah. That uh, you know, is senior fitting that you would like to like to see. Are any painting classes or anything like that? Yeah, they do a painting. Yeah. 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 You know, we started back with our basic programs and um, you know, we try to add on wherever you can. I mean some people that were in certain groups either aren't coming anymore, we've had a lot of people die over the last couple of years, there's mm -hmm. some of our elderly people, and um, some that are now homebound. So, like bingo, I think we're probably just gonna do on Thursdays. We still have a following for it. It's an amazing thing because the way that Ron plays it, it really does take a lot to be able to figure out. Yeah. It's not just calling yeah. up and down and across. Right. You have to do, <laughs> yeah. right, some other things. So our bingo yeah. group is our bingo group, and our naming group is our naming group, and, We'll, um, we're going to try to integrate some crafting classes. We're going to be doing eggs and wooden eggs and different things. So mm -hmm. we're open to to anything. But I, I also would like to see the afternoons uh, fill up a little bit more. We're going to be doing a photography class. That's going to be starting, I hope, in May or June. We were slated to do that before we closed. Um, and that is, he's going to do some things here. And then some things will be field trips. It's like a six-week class. You can do it with a smartphone. You can do it with a camera. So we are definitely trying to expand, but any suggestions you have, we are definitely willing to, to embrace. I'd love to do a dance class again, because that was fun. Um, so. Pam, I was also thinking about when you did the beef stew bread bowls. That was, that was awesome. We yeah. have that on the agenda for February. Mm -hmm. But that's really a, a winter, yeah. cold yeah. weather. We'll have to wait till the fall for that. It's a happy place. We need to bring yeah. out a happy place. Yes. Yeah, I think you know, it brings up a great point. I mean, you know, it's, it's time now to open this place up again. Yes, and, yeah, and, and anybody that has ideas on, on yeah. doing programs, please mm -hmm. bring it to Patrice yeah. and, and, 
everybody talk about it. Yeah. It's I'm so done isolated. You know, it was the most horrible and thing. Then, and there might it be people really that was. don't want to come in here and present. There's still maybe a little fear of COVID. Mm -hmm. and we understand that, but definitely um, it's a good time for us as a senior center to look at new ideas yeah. and try different things. It's important. It's we an are opportunity working. now. We are uh, throwing around the idea of doing a walk and talk club. And um, we figured we'd start it maybe somewhere outside um, in the nicer months, maybe April or May. See how many people we can get signed up. Jen or I will switch off and um, we'll have a topic and just walk and talk and get physically fit. And then if it takes off, then in the fall and in the winter, we can do it up in this place in the gym. Sure. So we have uh, tried to bounce some things off. You know, right now we're just trying to get everybody back. Yeah, I know. That's been a, so that's a little a bit of a feat. Yeah. Yes. It takes time, but it can happen. Yeah. If you're looking to us for suggestions, I'm sure if you want to sit down and have a brainstorming yeah. period, we'd be glad to yeah. help out. Yeah. But by the same token, we're looking to you to come up with some suggestions and bounce them off of us, and you are in charge of the schedule. and. I just like to see, even if it's one day a month, like the third Wednesday of a month, you're going to have a speaker, or the third Tuesday of the month, you're going to have uh, some other, a movie and snack. Or, but make it standardized and stick with it, so when you do it, get people to come to it that aren't used to coming here. They're going to say, hey, that, that was fun. Mm -hmm. Next month, they're doing it again. I'll come back. So like the third Wednesday of the month, they're always going to be a speaker. So we'll yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Try to standardize the dates. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's like, yeah. insane. Two yeah. years ago. Yeah. So I think that you know, with just reopening, it's going to take some time to get back to that. I have a, a whole list of people I'm still booking from two years ago. Yeah. We had the judge that was going to come in, so yeah. he's going to be on the roster for the summer. And um, Sutton's got yeah. one today at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so oh. we, we just got, uh, a Landers just picked up a paper that was at Stephen Thorpe, which was just where they moved the little bit of practice. And they had it out on the table for people to encircle things that were listed as what they might be interested in. Now that things are opening up, so I can show you that she's got it. I'll have to put it in. Maybe if we put it someplace over there, people can just yeah. circle things they'd be interested in. It's more of an idea. We could do a going. questionnaire yeah. in our St. Patrick's Day lunch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. The St. Patrick's Day lunch. But that's an idea because instead of looking for suggestions, it's the opposite of putting out a suggestion box. You are providing suggestions and you're saying, well, which of these do you like? Okay, you know? I'll never bring that in. Yeah. Monday at 12 o'clock. Yeah. Okay, we'll modify it. I know one of the things they did at Northbridge and it kind of backfired, but it's a success on its own level. They put the hairdresser, the men who go to Northbridge all said, we want someone who can give haircuts. So they got a hairdresser from Douglas who goes there one day a month. She's there for four hours. And no men go. <laughs> they all wanted the hairdresser. And they got it. And the men aren't showing up. Because they used to going to their favorite barber, or uh, yeah. they don't want to give them up. Yes. But she is busy. She's book solid. Mm -hmm. Well, all the women are going, you know, and the women <laughs> think oh, you it's. Went. I went and got a haircut. And it's just a chair in a bathroom. <laughs> that's that's yeah. all. She doesn't need any room. They have, like we do, two bathrooms. They opened one bathroom. They put a chair in there. And for four hours a month, she, that's her site. And they have a relaxer chair outside. 
the, the door for whoever's waiting to go next, mm -hmm. and she books them every 30 minutes, and she's booked, and she's making money, you know, because she's keeping it all. She doesn't have to share it. She doesn't have to rent the space. Uh, but it's the thing is, it's standard. You can look at the calendar and you see, all right, third Thursday from 10 to 2, they're giving haircuts or manicures or whatever. There are a lot of people out about town that have talents and a license to do different things mm -hmm. that aren't working and because of kids or whatever. They can't work full time, but they could one day a month. That's how we got these two new volunteers at the food pantry. They were both retired, bored, wanted something to do, and they they so enjoyed coming. And Send them over to our house. <laughs> no, they're going to mine first, Jim. House cleaning. All right, folks. House cleaning. Can they split wood? Yeah. <laughs> Do the lawns. The, they're both good workers, too. Patrice, I'm sorry, I have to leave. No, I have a doctor. Okay. We, we just need to pick the next meeting. The date of our next meeting. And I got to go it. see my girl Angie first. We're looking at uh, Wednesday or Tuesday. What do you think? Um, Tuesday, we're going to be bringing Zuba back. Okay, so Wednesday. 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 April. 13th? Does that work for everybody? Yep. April 13th, 9 a.m.? Yes. Is it right next door? Yeah. Yeah. Well, April. April. Yeah. All right. So the next meeting will be on April 13th. And it will be back here. And it will yep. be back here. Yep. Okay. Um, all I need now is a motion to adjourn today's meeting. I'm motion. Second. I'll second. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Done and done. <laughs>